Okay, so for number 12, um, we're finding the volume obtained uh, by taking the area bounded between these curves and then revolving it about the line y is equal to 2. So let's draw these curves. And uh, I'm really going to have to zoom in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to consider that uh, I'm going to scale these axes. So I'm going to make them e each of these um, equal to 0 0.25. All right, so let me just put down the scale that each of this is, is equal to 0 0.25. Okay, so uh, we begin with our curve here. Y is equal to e to the minus x. So e to the minus x is the exponential curve that has been um, mirrored across the y-axis. So when we go to the positive side, it decreases, and we go to, when we go to the negative axis, uh, part of the x-axis, it increases. So it goes 0, 1, right? Um, because anything to the power of 0 is 1, so 1, 2, 3, 4. So the curve goes like, like so. Yeah. So this is our first curve. Um, y is equal to e to the minus x. Let's do our second curve now. Now we have the curve um, y is equal to 1. So we do have this curve here. y is equal to 1. Um, and I just realized that I'm going to have to extend my y-axis. Okay. Now we have the other curve, which is our x is equal to 2. Right. So let's see. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, that's 2, yeah. So this over here is our x is equal to 2. And we can see that the area bounded between these curves um, is this section here in yellow. All right, so once we have this, uh, it's asking us to revolve it around the line um, y is equal to, about y is equal to 2. So let's um, one, two, three, four. Yeah. So there's this line here, right? This is y is equal to two, and then it's asking us to revolve it about this line. So when we revolve it about this line, um, we have to think about what is what is actually happening here, right? Um, let me zoom out for you guys to see. Okay. So what is actually happening here is that we're um, we're taking this section. Let me find a good color to do it in. Um, maybe I'll do it in light blue, yeah. We're taking this section here, and then we're revolving it around like so. So we're creating this, um, this disc, right, around it. Oh, that's a terribly drawn disc. Yeah. This disc around it. And then when we create this disc and we sum up all these discs, um, from, from zero all the way to two, we're going to have a volume. The thing is, how do we model this disk? Because this disk is not constant. Um, this disk is changing, the width of it, right? And the reason that we know that it's, it's changing, um, let me just erase it. The reason that we know that it's changing is that the, um, the little width that gets revolved, it gets smaller as we go to the left, and it gets bigger as we go to the right. So these are the little um, widths that are getting revolved to fo form a disk. So we have to find a way to model this changing, um, this changing width and therefore the changing volume, right? Um, so how are we going to model this? Well, this disk is comprised of a bigger area, right? Uh, a bigger area, maybe we're gonna call this A1, and then minus a2, so minus a smaller area, a2, right? Um, and that difference, so a1 minus a2, that difference is going to give us the, the ring that we actually have that we want to revolve. Um, okay, cool. So what is a1? Well, a1 is the biggest uh, the biggest ring, right? And since we're revolving about the line y is equal to 2, um, the, the length of our radius, and the length of our radius goes from here, and I'll just draw the line, all the way to the lower curve, right? So how do we model this? 
Well, this length is two minus a little bit, right? Because if it were two, it would go, um, it would fully go all the way down here, but it's not two, it's two minus something. Um, and that something is the height of the green curve. It's the full, it's the full two, um, let me draw that out. It is the full two minus, minus this little chunk. So if I remove that little chunk, I'm left with just the outer radius. Um, cool. So once we once we know this, we are ready to model it. So that is a1 is pi. The radius is just then 2 minus the green curve, minus e to the minus x. Yeah, that's the biggest radius. Um, what about the smallest radius, right? Well, the smallest radius here, um, it is just... Let's see, the smallest radius is very easy uh, because it doesn't actually change, it's constant, right? It's just two minus one, it's wherever it hits this line. So because it is a constant, um, it's pretty easy for us to deal with, right? The only thing that changes really is the outer radius. So, um, oops, I forgot to put my square here because it's pi r squared. And then my a2 is just um, pi times one squared. So really, a1 minus a2 is equal to, I'm going to put the, um, is pi times 2 minus e to the minus x squared minus um, pi times 1, right? So minus pi. Um, all right. So, or let me just simplify this, pi, and then this is, um, I'm going to FOIL this out just so that we can integrate it a little bit easier, right? This is, let's see, when we FOIL it, that's e to the minus 2x, and then minus 2, minus 2, so minus 4 e to the minus x, and then um, plus 4, and then minus 1, right? And then minus 1. Um, yeah, that's our a1 minus a2. Okay, so once we have this, we are ready to set up our integral. Um, and let me, we'll just draw the the ring here that goes around right this is our a1 minus a2 so just a reminder then that we're summing up these rings right we're summing them from x is equal to zero which this point all the way from x is equal to two so it is the integral from zero to two of this whole thing here so now i'm going to put the pi outside because it's just a constant so pi and then inside it goes e to the minus two x um, minus 4 e to the minus x, and then plus 4 minus 1, which is plus 3, and all this times dx. All right, now we are good to go. So given this, um, we'll just integrate it. So this is e to the minus 2x divided by minus 2, um, and then that is the minus and minus cancel out when I'm integrating, right? So that's plus 4e to the minus x, and then plus 3x, um, all of this times pi, and then evaluated from 0 to 2. Um, so let's then apply our boundary. So that is pi times, let's see, when we plug in 2 here, it's e to the um, minus 4 over negative 2, plus 4 e to the minus 2 um, plus 6 and then we're going to go minus minus when we apply the lower boundary so um, when we apply the lower boundaries e to the 0 is just is just 1 right so minus minus 1 half so plus 1 half plus 1 half and then once more e to the 0 is just 1 so minus 4 minus 4, and then lastly, when we plug in 0 into 3x, it disappears. And then when we simplify this, this is just pi, um, let's see, this is e to the minus 4 over 2 plus 4 e to the minus 2, and then that is 6 minus 4, so 2, then plus 1 half, so plus 5 halves. And that is our volume for this problem.